Bible smack. Okay, today I'm going to give a reaction because I know it's a story that's starting to pick up and get some reactions and stuff, so, you know, might as well weigh in, I guess. Um, it's sad news. Uh, there is a uh, pastor, I think he's, I don't know if he's like a famous pastor as much as probably getting to that point, you know, there's different kind of levels of fame these days, so, you know, I, you know, I know people in reform circles know a lot about him, but outside of that, not so sure. And his name is uh, Stephen Lawson, and so Stephen Lawson is a preacher, um, seems to be like a, uh, a Calvinist, I think the John MacArthur type. I think he's associated. Oh, yeah. yeah of course he is. He's uh, with the Master Seminary and stuff. So, um, Basically, that's kind of his circle. And um, he fell into sin uh, with an inappropriate relationship with a woman, apparently. And they have, uh, his church has fired him. Um. Now, it gets weird because you get uh, press releases about, you know, if a pastor gets disciplined. And why I say that's weird is that, really, this stuff should not be um, a big public spectacle, okay? Um, because it it's dealing with situation, and, and I think that in general there's a, a case to be made that this is kind of the way we should look at all stuff. When, you, when you're dealing with the local stuff, and there's a local crime or whatever, does it need to be blasted all across the nation? You know, um, And I'm talking in general, law enforcement or whatever. Yeah, there's always going to be evil out there. You know, you, you really don't want to uh, embellish, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, especially like in the court system, because, you know, people in the courts, um, you know, they're not supposed to be partial when they make a judgment. And yet, you know, we'll have a lot of these cases that become judged by the media, basically, before during and after the judgment of the court system. And, you know, same way, um, this is a private issue, and it's privately done by the church. For instance, like, you know, um, inappropriate relationship. What does that mean? Um, we would typically think the worst. Okay. So we say, okay, well, they're hiding it. So, you know, basically, we're thinking the whole nine yards, okay? But, what if it wasn't? What if it's just, you know, oh, well, they felt this way or said that, you know? Because, I mean, unfortunately, there's a lot of variability. A lot of people have different standards, different looks, you know? Um, I was watching um, a documentary on, like, this rock and roll singer. And uh, I was like, Dee Snyder. And he said that, um, you know, he may wear makeup and do the rock and roll and stuff. But, like, he said he, he doesn't promote violence. He said he doesn't um, believe in Satanism, that he believes in Christianity, that he doesn't drink or smoke drugs. Um, but yet people are like, well, you got long hair, you're acting crazy, you know, and you're making a lot of money doing it. <coughs> so, you know, we just got a lot of different ethical standards, which is okay in a free society, okay? So, you know, that's fine about how they do their business, but, like, it probably shouldn't be brought up to begin with, okay? Um, you know, unless it's heinous, okay? But if it was heinous, you just say it's heinous, all right? Um, 
so you know that's that's something that I, I forget there was a uh, there was a form pastor that had another situation like that um, that's something I know he was popular but like it was a little past me I've gotten out of the preacher fanboy thing you know I just you know, I might listen to a preacher here or there but generally um, I want to go to the word you know see what God's word has to say about the topic, not, you know, my favorite pastor who will lead me this way or lead me that way. Um, anyway, so, um, he, um, you know, he's apparently been disgraced. It's never a good thing, you know, but, but um, assuming that the church, because he's not fighting this yet. So, assume that the church is doing it, you know, accurately. Then, um, basically, uh, God bless that church. You know, it's a hard thing to go through. But, you know, it's better that the church takes care of a situation like that than uh, lets, you know, some of these guys run amok. Okay? Because that's where the evil happens is when you don't have any accountability. So, nevertheless, um, the thing that's like a particular sting to this is the fact that uh, there seems to be a lot of hypocrisy in the whole situation. Now, a lot of like the, you know, current reform movement, um, I call them New Calvinists typically, but Basically, this movement has really brought about a pharisaical spirit. Uh, they promote lordship salvation, which undermines justification. Um, and salvation by God's grace through faith. Instead, you know, it's like, well, it's grace through faith, but you got to prove it by your works. You know? You're not assured unless you do good works. So, like, you know, then you have this competitive spirit. Uh, there's a popular YouTube channel called Reform Wiki, and they'll say, okay, here's this guy, and he's just an evil heretic. Brr, say boo, everybody. Brr. And here's the Calvinist, and he's going to say something sound. And it's as if no other preacher says anything sound unless they're you know, one of their club, right? If they're on their team, then we're going to show the little sound bites when they do their best and then if they're on the other team we show the sound bites when they do their worst okay and it is you know it's just this competition and christianity is supposed to be you know really based in love love your neighbor love god's people you know love god but instead it's you know you hate the world and you know, you hate anyone who disagrees with you. And so, um, there have been videos of Steve Lawson um, on this topic, and others too, but on this topic specifically, being very uh, legalistic and very judgmental. And now, you know, here he is in that same sin. Um, now, when we think about the thing of like, is the theology to blame? Well, I think his theology is bad. Okay. Um, I believe that, like, you know, there are some things that may seem like a bigger deal to others. And, you know, people will talk about that whole, oh, it's a first tier or second tier. Does the Bible say that? You know, I mean, that, that's, that's where we have to be careful, okay, with these hucksters. They, they want to, set up the rules so you know basically they've developed this self-imposed reputation we're the real christians we're the good christians and then what happens when they fall well typically what's happening is not forgiveness <laughs> you know it's the crab bucket you know you, the crabs stay in the bucket because they're all trying to pull each other down so you know um you combine you know the hypocrisy with his sin, 
Um, no, it doesn't look good for Steve Lawson. Um, is this proof that his doctrines are bad? Uh, no. Um, they don't help, but the problem is, is that men struggle with lust and sexual sin. Just do. Doesn't matter what religion you are, you're still, you know, going to have your temptations. And don't get me wrong, I mean, there's some people that might not have that temptation. But you have temptations, and you have other sins that you're going to struggle with. And, you know, that's, that's human nature. So, with that being said, um, you can't go from A to B or A to D in this point. Um, and so, if I'm talking to somebody, I'm really just being a stick in the mud if I'm saying, well, he's wrong about Calvinism, so therefore, um, now he's in lust. But um, there are two things. I, I think there is a systematic problem. But I would have to use the scripture to prove that problem. Otherwise, I'm just going by experience. And even if I convince people who are like-minded with me, I'm definitely not going to be convincing people who are not. You know, so you have to stick to it and just say, here's what the Bible says. Here's what the Bible says. Here's what the Bible says. Okay. Um, otherwise, you're just, you're, you're really just button heads with somebody and it's just not going to do anything and i'm sure i've butted heads with more than my share <laughs> so you know i've got good experience i've got bad experience so you know hey um you know i think that um it would be a good time like if you knew steve lawson to show him a little grace okay um not that, like, you know, I mean, obviously, there's other issues. What's going on with his family, with this whole thing going on? But, like, um, you know, and obviously, I, I wouldn't trust this man with uh, ministry for maybe the rest of his life. Maybe there could be some you know, redemption, but it's just kind of one of those things where it's not even worth discussing for the first few years. It, it's really not. Um, but basically, um, you know, at the same time, um, uh, he, he's a human being, and you can't teach somebody grace with law. That's That was his problem, so you're not helping that out. I mean, what are you going to do? You pound him a couple more times, and maybe now that he's down and out, maybe he's going to, like, you know, jump off the cliff or something, okay? I mean, really, you know, you don't kick somebody when they're down. Um, so I would kind of be careful if you would disagree with his doctrines of lordship, salvation, and Calvinism, and then say, ha, 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 whether to him or to one of his uh, disciples. It's just, you know, it's just not productive. Okay, so one of their doctrines um, that I think is very telling here, like I've seen, you know, since they're putting out a lot of clips lately, I've seen statements of his that endorse workspace salvation. I mean, they just do. Um, he might probably have a way around it if we're writing out a confession. But, you know, when you're living your daily life, you're not writing out a confession. You know, so, um, yeah, so the, um, I do believe the workspace salvation does not achieve born again, you know, of the Holy Spirit, a regeneration. It, it doesn't make you immune to temptations and sin and, you know, where the flesh is concerned. Um, I've got some other material that I've, show biblically why lordship salvation is not what the bible is actually teaching but um how about we want to take a break off of that today even though there is a connection there there's a little minor doctrine that i think is really worth exploring because i think that kind of 
sends this group into that form of legalism. And that is the nature of the Christian. If you get born again, are you born again with only your regenerate nature? And your regenerate nature should be a good nature, right? Because you're putting on Christ. And so are you just a perfect Christian after that point? Or is there a nature that you're battling with? And essentially, um, I think the view of John MacArthur and probably the whole Master Seminary is that you have a new nature and that you don't have your old nature anymore. You don't have the carnal nature. So what's that going to do to them? They're going to say, hey, I'm a winner and I have to be a winner because if I'm not a winner, well, then what do you say? See, that's where there's the connection of the legalism. And so that this is where you really want to go when you're when you engage in this. You know, you got to get it back to the Bible, not to your reaction or their view or whatever. That's all subjective. So let me look at this scripture here. This is Second Corinthians chapter five, and their proof text is verse seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So here you have like you're a new creature, and the old things are passed away. Therefore, you have a new new nature, and the old nature is gone, right? Let me go ahead, and I'll give you the... Uh, verse that would dispute that notion. First Corinthians, and there's a couple verses like this, but let's go ahead and look at this. This is in First uh, Corinthians, I think it's two. If I'm wrong, it's three. Okay, let's try three. Okay. 1 Corinthians 3, so that would have been Paul's earlier letter. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as babes, I'm sorry, even as unto babes in Christ. As I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? So this is very important here because what we're seeing is that, um, you know, Paul is talking to these people, they're babes in Christ, okay, and that they're not mature, so they need to be mature. And this doctrine, you know, I believe it's in the Bible um, that a Christian um, is, you know, born again, but that they need to reach a level of maturity when it comes to their sanctification. And I think that normally that happens, but you need to be um, shepherded. You need to uh, grow in your discipleship. And uh, have a walk with Christ that actually helps you get from point A, the immaturity, to the maturity. Some people can actually get to that point fairly quickly. Maybe they've studied the scriptures for many years before they got saved. And so they studied the scriptures, they understood Christianity, and they lived their life for a while. So they understood the right and the wrong and the consequences of that. And so when they got saved... They moved on to maturity very quickly. That's great. But um, some people miss the mark. Uh, some people get evangelized and they just don't um, get shepherded. And so I believe that those types of people, and there's actually a statistical name, they call them the born agains because um, these people would get saved like at Billy Graham rallies and they just never got churched. So. These people have not achieved a maturity. 
I don't believe it's the same as some sort of second work of grace where, you know, now you must achieve the super Christianity. No. It's that something went wrong and now you got to get to the place where you should be. Okay. So, um, yeah, so we just saw where, you know, there is people being identified as fleshly. Well, well hold on. What about that verse again? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Well, what do we need to do? What we need to do is we need to look at this in the bigger context. So, let's go back a few verses. Let's see here. All right, I'll start at verse 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. So, uh, Jesus Christ has, you know, died for all mankind. Uh, I don't know if it's all there in that sense, but, you know, one died for all, then we're all dead. And we know all being dead is universal, so that's why I'm going ahead with that. And there's other verses, too, but anyway. And that he died for all, that they which should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. So if Jesus has saved you, you should live for Christ. Sounds pretty good. And at verse 15, that he died for, uh, verse 16, Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now, henceforth, we know him no more. So, when we say we know no man after the flesh, we understand no man after his fleshly nature. Um, yea, though we have known, let's see here. Yeah. So, wherever, henceforth, okay, at this point, we understand someone um, after the, let's see here. We don't understand someone after the flesh. Yea, though ye have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth we know him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. So you see what God is doing with them. You know them as a saint. You know them as somebody who is a brother in Christ because of the adoption, because of the salvation. You know what God's going to do with them. And you know them after that. So we know people by their new nature, um, not their old nature. But it doesn't mean that their old nature is gone, because what is their old nature? Flesh. You still have your flesh. Physical. Your body. That's what he's talking about, is your body. So we don't know somebody according to their body. You know, maybe somebody doesn't look like but I don't know him according to how he looks. I know him by how God knows him. And if he's born again, then that is my brother in Christ. That's how I know him. And um, so he says, um, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. So um, that's something that we must do, is that we must um, reconcile through the cross. That's the power of the cross. Um, when we deal with this situation, uh, you know, you can't live like that when you are you know, operating as the pastor of a church because you're not giving people a good example of what Christianity is. You can't be doing that to your wife. 
And that's not just the only sin. A lot of sins in which can ruin a ministry. And there's also a lot of sins that can ruin your witness as a member of a church. You know, so this is the point that we have to live a godly religion so that we can have a godly testimony to lift Jesus Christ up. Even though uh, it's not the end all be all of our salvation, and even though it's not the end all be all of what truth is, uh, we still have to align our behavior with our beliefs. So, catch you later.